Matt Holtquist here with the QuickBooks University. I wanted to go through the top three mistakes in QuickBooks Online. Uh, this is based on working with many, many, many businesses uh, that use QuickBooks Online, and these are the mistakes that they typically make. Now, why are these mistakes? Uh, uh, this is because they enter information wrong, they end up using QuickBooks Online as a glorified checkbook, and they don't get the right information. Okay, so you have a business, you want to know if you're making money or not making money, and doing these things wrong will give you the wrong information. So if you're making decisions based on what you have in QuickBooks Online, and you're doing some of these mistakes, you're probably making bad decisions because you're making bad decisions because you have bad information. Okay, so let's go through these uh, briefly. The first one is bills, okay? And I'm a, you know, I talk about this quite a lot, but when you enter bills in QuickBooks Online, there's a certain process you wanna go through, all right? So if we go over here to the Quick Create menu and we enter a bill, okay? It brings up the uh, enter a bill screen, okay? And you choose your vendor. Now we'll just pick one here. Uh, it doesn't matter, Cal Telephone, okay? So the big mistake people make, there's two when they enter bills, and I talk about this in a previous video as well. The first one is the bill date, okay? You wanna make sure that you put in the bill date that is on that bill. QuickBooks Online uh, will default to today's date, and you wanna make sure that you uh, put it to the date that's on the bill. So for example, if this bill came back May 31st, and you're just entering it now, you wanna make sure you put May 31st. The reason is that will be included as an expense in May. But if you do it as of today's date, you're gonna put it in as an expense in June, all right? The second mistake they make is they do not put in the bill number, all right? The bill number is an invoice number, uh, et cetera. So when there is an invoice number on an invoice, put it in. The reason is, is because a lot of times vendors will send duplicate bills and people end up paying them twice. And when you put in the bill number, if you put it in consistently for all bills, QuickBooks will catch when there's a duplicate one. All right, so make sure you put that in. So on the bills screen, first of all, make sure you enter your bills in QuickBooks Online. Secondly, put in the right bill date and put in the bill number. All right, okay. So we're gonna leave that screen. We're gonna go back to the home screen here. The second mistake people make in QuickBooks Online is not setting up their bank feeds. All right, this is very simple, but people don't do it, all right? The bank feeds are designed to make your life easier, to save you time, but so many people don't set this up for whatever reason, okay? So when you set up your bank feeds, you're automatically linking your checking savings uh, credit cards, et cetera, uh, to QuickBooks Online, and it will download your information. Okay, pretty simple. Now, the problem is people generally don't go here to categorize their expenses or their deposits or whatever the case may be. So you'll see here that QuickBooks will match up. Okay, there was a deposit here. We downloaded it. If it matches, okay, you just match, and it's not going to duplicate. So you simply click this, and it's not gonna duplicate it in QuickBooks. If there's two records found or multiple, it's gonna alert you to that so that you can look at both of these. Okay, so which one is it? All right, and of course, if there's uncategorized, then you get to categorize that and put it in the right category. And you'll see that if I say, uh, let's say A1 rental is not in there, but if we put it as, uh, let's say, uh, let's pick one here. Let's say that it's uh, equipment rental, okay? We can simply add it there, all right? And you'll see that it's gonna put the other one there automatically, okay? So this can save you a ton of time. So make sure you set up your bank feeds, otherwise you're wasting a bunch of time, all right? Now the third mistake that I see people make in QuickBooks Online is their credit cards, okay? Typically what people will do is they will get a bill in the mail, okay? 
uh, and for the credit card, or they'll get an email that says, hey, your statement is ready. And there might be a bunch of charges on there. So we get to you know, the end of that statement, and let's say the balance is $5,000, all right? And you're gonna make the minimum payment of 250, all right? So how do you record that? Well, what people typically do, if they're even entering bills, is they will go and they will enter a bill and they'll put it, the vendor will be the credit card company and they're just gonna put in the $250, okay? So it maybe it makes sense, you know, I got a bill for $250 from the credit card company, that's how much I need to pay. And so they're gonna pick an account, okay? So, uh, you know, it could be any random account, really. Uh, let's say that it's um, dues and subscriptions, they put in $250, and you know they put in the credit card name here and it becomes a bill and then they pill it and pay it and they have a minimum balance paid and all is good well that is the wrong way to do it all right okay so what you want to do first of all is you're going to set up the bank feed for the mastercard or the visa or whatever credit card it is and you're going to accept your transactions all right now once you've accepted all your transactions, okay, you're going to go to reconcile your credit card, okay? So if we go uh, over here to tools and we say reconcile, okay, we're going to reconcile an account, okay, and we're going to say that it is the MasterCard, all right? All right, so First of all, you have to put in your ending balance. So let's say it's $5,000 and the ending date is uh, June 30th, okay? We start reconciling, we're gonna go through. And if you have accepted all your transactions, then you can mark off which expenses and which payments are on the credit card, okay? Why is this important? Uh, first of all, once you reconcile the credit card, QuickBooks Online is going to ask you, do you want to enter a bill now or to pay for later, or do you want to pay the balance now? Okay. If you're paying the minimum payment after you reconcile your credit card, you're going to choose enter a bill for payment later. And that's when you're going to put in the minimum balance due. Okay. So what does this do? All right. First of all, all these expenses, uh, that are on this credit card are current expenses. You can take these all as expenses. And by including all these and reconciling, you are now uh, including the right expenses in your profit and loss, and you're recording the right balance. The balance on a credit card that you owe is called a liability, and that's just money you owe to somebody else, okay? So the important thing to keep in mind is credit cards are not current bills, so you don't enter them up here as a bill. You want to first make sure you get all those credit card charges in there. The easiest way is through the bank feed. Then you want to reconcile the credit card. And then you want to enter the bill after you reconcile the credit card. Okay. These are the top mistakes that I see in QuickBooks Online. Okay. Uh, there's many, many more that people make. And, uh, you know, my... My goal with the QuickBooks University is to help people record things right and understand why they're recording them a certain way so that they have the right financial statements to help guide their business. So we'd love to have you come over to the QuickBooks University checkout. We've got a whole lot more over there, free videos. Uh, we've got uh, uh, 44 video training tutorials on QuickBooks Online, and uh, we also have QuickBooks desktop training. So head on over there. QuickBooks University at qbuniversity.org.